One of the most recognisable historical figures is Mahatma Gandhi. On the 30th of January 1948, at the age of 78, Gandhi was shot dead with three bullets being fired into his chest at point-blank range. He fell to the ground and was then carried away before shortly after he died. His assassin was Nafuram Godsa, a man who disagreed with Gandhi's work, and he was grabbed and arrested before he was placed on trial. The crowd who witnessed the execution were in great shock, as a non-violent resistance leader, an advocate was brutally slain. But what is the story of the execution of the man who shot Gandhi? Join us today as we find out, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Gandhi in 1921 assumed leadership of the Indian National Congress, and he led a nationwide campaign for easing poverty, helping women's rights and achieving self-rule. His clothes that he wore were aimed to speak at the rural poor of India, and he lived in a self-sufficient residential community, where they ate simple foods and had long fasts, as a way of political protest sometimes. Gandhi led Indian people to challenge the British imposed salt tax, which led to the Salt March, and then he called for the British to quit India in 1942. Throughout his life he was imprisoned and held a number of times, being regarded as a troublemaker. Britain would grant India independence, but partition the land between two dominions, a Hindu-majority India and a Muslim-majority Pakistan. With this many people were displaced and there was huge religious violence. Gandhi visited the affected area and tried to calm things down, and he even went on hunger strikes to stop the religious violence, with his final strike beginning in Delhi on the 12th of January 1948, when he was 78. This was a few weeks before he was shot dead. His assassin, Nafuram Godza, became an activist with the Hindu nationalist organisation, the RSS, and he joined the group in 1932. During this time he translated books into English with another, but he was considered a volatile member of the group. In 1946, Godza then claimed he left the RSS and moved to the Hindu Mahasabha due to the partition of India, but it was also claimed that he even up to his final days was a member of the RSS, even after he allegedly left the organisation. The RSS was a right-wing paramilitary volunteer organisation, and it ridiculed Gandhi's non-violent work. Godza and his assassination accomplices were residents of a certain region, and Godza was part of this civil disobedience, and was arrested for political crimes, and even served a prison sentence. But when he was out of prison, he continued civil disobedience, but the plans to assassinate Gandhi were drawn up and then initiated. On the day that Gandhi went on hunger strike, Godza and his colleagues began to plot how to kill him. Godza purchased a Beretta pistol, and then his friends began to shadow Gandhi's movements. Gandhi had been staying at the Balmiki Temple in the north part of New Delhi, but he then moved to the Birla House, a large mansion on the Albuquerque Road in Delhi. Gandhi was living in two modest rooms in the left wing. The first attempt to assassinate him occurred on the 20th of January 1948. It was said that Godza and his colleagues followed Gandhi to a park where he was speaking. One threw a grenade from the crowd, and then a large explosion scared them, which created a stampede. Gandhi was left alone on the platform, and the plan was then to throw a second grenade, but one accomplice lost his courage, and he did not throw the second grenade and ran away with the crowd. But on the day of his assassination, Gandhi was joined by his great-niece, Manuben, and she was walking with him when he was assassinated. It was said that Gandhi started the day in Birla House, and he worked on a Congress constitution he wanted to publish, and then he had a bath and a massage at 8am. He told his niece to take care of herself, then after his bath he was weighed, and he ate lunch and discussed riots. Following lunch he napped, and then he awoke and had a meeting with others. After the meeting he was walking to prayer, and he walked with Manabin to his right, and a young man in khaki pushed through the crowd and bent over with his hands folded. It was believed that this man wanted to touch Gandhi's feet, and after this his niece told the man that Gandhi was already ten minutes late for prayer. This man was Godza, the assassination, and then four shots were fired, with large booms echoing around and smoke everywhere. Gandhi then fell, and a crowd pushed towards him, and there was blood everywhere. It took ten minutes to carry him back into the house, and there was no doctor on hand, and there was only a small first aid box to treat his wounds. It was said, the first bullet from the assassin's seven ball automatic hit the belly three and a half inches to the right of the middle, and two and a half inches above the navel, and the second hit the belly one inch from the middle, 
and the third four inches to the right. Gandhi suffered heavy blood loss and everyone was crying, but as people were phoning for an ambulance, Gandhi was pronounced dead. It was said that the assassin was seized by Herbert Rayner, Jr., a 32-year-old man from the American Embassy. He had reached Berla House and he found himself in the crowd, but he viewed the security measures around Gandhi as inadequate. He said that, for a few seconds no one could believe what had happened, everyone seemed dazed and numb, and then a young American who had come for prayers rushed forward and seized the shoulders of the man in the khaki coat. That broke the spell. Half a dozen people stooped to lift Gandhi. Others hurled themselves at the attacker. He was overpowered and taken away. Rayner also stated that, Godsar stood nearly motionless, with a small beretta dangling in his right hand, and to my knowledge made no attempt to escape or take his own life. Moving towards Godsar, I extended my right arm in an attempt to seize his gun, but in doing so grabbed his right shoulder in a manner that spun him into the hands of Royal Indian Air Force men, also spectators who disarmed him. I then fastened a firm grip around his neck and shoulders until other military and police took him into custody. It was claimed that Godsar was beaten, and that but for those who seized him, he would have shot his way out. Other sources claim that he surrendered voluntarily, and others say he was rushed and beaten badly by the crowd. The assassination was investigated, and a number of other accomplices were arrested. Along with Godsar, other members of the Hindu, Mahasabha, were arrested, and the trial at the lower courts began on the 27th of May, 1948. It ran for eight months, and the court found all the defendants guilty except one. Nafur and Godsar were sentenced to death by hanging, and all except Godsar appealed their conviction. Godsar came to terms with his death sentence, and he wanted to accept that he was solely responsible for the assassination, and he claimed that all the others were innocent and should be released. It was said that Godsar tried to use the courtroom as a political forum by reading a long declaration in which he tried to justify his crimes. He accused Gandhi of complacency towards Muslims, blamed him for the suffering of partition, and generally criticised his subjectivism, a pretension to a monopoly of the truth. Although his attacks were met with some echo in the high castle Hindu circles, traditionally hostile to Gandhi, he could not create a groundswell of opinion in his favour. During his statement to the court, during the appeal it was said, the audience was visibly and audibly moved. There was a deep silence when he ceased speaking. Many women were in tears and men were coughing and searching for their handkerchiefs. The silence was accentuated and made deeper by the sound of an occasional subdued sniff or muffled cough. It seemed to me that I was taking part in a kind of melodrama or a scene out of a Hollywood feature film. The audience most certainly thought God's performance was the only worthwhile part of the lengthy proceedings. I have no doubt that the audience of that day had been constituted into a jury and entrusted with the task of deciding God's appeal. They would have brought in a verdict of not guilty by an overwhelming majority. Godsar's death sentence was confirmed and he was to be hanged on the 15th of November 1949. He was executed inside of the Ambala jail and a witness said that Godsar repented of his deed and declared that he was to be given another chance then he would spend the rest of his life in the promotion of peace and service of the country. The two condemned prisoners were led out of their cells with their hands pinioned behind them. Godsar walked in front. His step occasionally faltered. His demeanour and general appearance evidenced a state of nervousness and fear. He tried to fight against it, to keep up a bold exterior by shouting every few seconds a slogan, Akhand Bharat, Undivided India. But his voice had a slight croak in it, and vigour, with which he then argued his case at his trial, and in the High Court seemed to have been all but expended. He was placed on the gallows structure, and was hanged until he was dead, for the killing of Gandhi, with another man and they were the first convicts to be executed in an independent India. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.